Beautifuls, this is Aromi here, and welcome back to Mystic Destiny's Serendipity of Beyond. What shows are out? We are here, I believe. The last time we met is what show hurting us? I don't quite remember. Anywho, I just want to let you know I'm willing to listen if you if you do want to. To talk, I assume. <laughs> show doesn't say anything, but his face seems to say it all. After a few moments of silence, I start to get up from the floor, but Sho grabs my hand. Oh yeah, he did hurt us. Wait, please. I'll tell you, just... Please don't leave me alone right now. Oh, my lover! Oh, my squishy boy! Uh, we're not leaving you. The last sentence comes out as a whisper, but I can hear the pleading in his voice. Yo, can you guys imagine if this game was voice act? Dead. We'll be all dead. I sit down, folding my legs beneath me. There's actually not that much to say when I think about it. It's, it's just not a pleasant memory. Sho takes a deep breath before he begins. When I was 13, I tried working on my powers all on my own. I was sick of being the only useless one in my family. No one took me seriously. Nobody even paid attention to me. What? Where were your parents? They didn't pay attention to you either. No wonder his powers are like... He didn't know how to control him. No one cared to help him. Shou's pain is evident in the bitter way he says this. And I realize that this is something that still, bo still bothers him. In my head, it was all because of my problems with my powers. It wasn't until later that I realized there were many other reasons. But I had convinced myself. I would suddenly regain my powers and my parents and everyone would love me again. So I tried practicing on my own in my room. It wasn't a good idea because I was even more powerful than before. And combined with teenage hormones and frustration and not knowing what I was doing, I ended up blowing up part of my bedroom. Even worse, my caretaker. Mineko? Mineko? Mineko was entering the room at the time and she was hit by the fragments and debris of the, oh shoot, of the explosion. They hit everywhere, all over her body. Just seeing her collapsing to the floor, blood everywhere. Maneko is so dear dear to me and I still hurt her. Sho reaches for my burned hand and holds it ever so gently. Just like you. Oh no! <laughs> ah, it's so sweet! Ah, I didn't expect such, such sweetness within like two minutes in. Even while she was at the hospital about to go into surgery, she just kept saying, It's okay, I'll be fine, Sho. But the fact that... But the fact was that I hurt the only person who ever cared about me. And I've done it again. Oh, love, don't cry. Look at the, the tear. The tears. No. No matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, it just never comes out right. Sho holds my injured hand to his face and closes his eyes, but I see the tears fall. Oh, love. I take his hand and hold it to my own face. Please don't say that. You're a wonderful, bright person, full of energy and kindness. And you're a talented actor and a great friend. Oh, the friend. Oh. Great friend to the others. <laughs> I struggle to find the words to describe how I feel about Sho. To, to make him see his, self, uh, see his self as the amazing person I see. But I'm not sure if the words are enough right now. I wipe my tears away with my arm and Sho looks up at me. I wish I could thank you for all you've done for me in such a short time. I just want to see you happy, Sho. I stare into Sho's eyes, trying to communicate my feelings as hard as I can. Can you please read my eyeballs? <laughs> How do I put the smile back on your face? He stares just as hard back into mine, and I wonder if he's he wonder what he's trying to tell me. Sho? Ooh. Ooh, Sho, dude, I don't know what to do. Honestly, I would move to be honest. Let's not move. I can feel my heart start to beat faster. I'm vaguely aware of the heat rising to my cheeks, but I don't dare move an inch. We're so close I can see the tiniest of details on Sho's face. I'm struck with an odd urge to reach out and touch him. Looking into those gorgeous golden eyes, staring back at me at, at, at <laughs> staring back at me, the world around us seems to almost fade away. Oh shoot, he didn't kiss us! Did we have to initiate it? Damn it! <laughs> Michiko thinks. Oh, um, you're, you're welcome. It's like my brain suddenly kicks in and understands precisely what it is that we've been doing and this strange position we're in. I practically throw down Sho's hand and scramble to get up. Okay, that's not what I wanted. 
Move closer. We're not moving away, because I think that would hurt him. Almost out of nowhere, I get an overwhelming urge to lean in. Having him so close, my eyes drift to his lips. His lips look so soft. I've... Oh. I had to initiate it. Upset. Our faces move closer to each other and I start to close my eyes. But nothing happens. Oh, that's even more embarrassing. I open them and show his face is still there in front of mine. Uh... <laughs> um... I feel like that's more embarrassing. He didn't do anything. Should I keep it like that? Should I keep it like that to show him that I want him? I don't know. Is that better? Is that better or worse? Let's try to move away. What if I just kiss? No, 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 no. What are you even thinking, Michiko? I'm suddenly very happy that Sho can't, in fact, read minds. Sho is the last person who needs to hear what I'm thinking right now. I pull away a little, ignore my frantically beating heart and the magnetic pull of Sho's gold eyes. I desperately pretend like he isn't affecting me like this. Huh. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna stick with... Uh, personally, I wouldn't move if I was in her position. But, does moving a little closer to him show him that we want him? I'll stick with the move closer. I don't know if my choices were correct. I practically throw down Sho's hand and scramble to get up. Sho easily stands up and offers me a hand. Though hesitant, I end up taking it when I realize I still feel dizzy. When I'm fully upright, we make eye contact for just a moment before I look away. Thanks. I, I'd better get going. Got her to class in the morning and some homework to do. I began gathering my things in a hurry. You're hurt. I should walk you home. You probably shouldn't be alone either. No! I mean, seriously, I feel fine. I was probably just a little shaken up. If I have any difficulties, I'll make sure to call you. But you can't always get your way, show. I'll see you later. Bye. Because I can't get my way, show. I wanted you to kiss me. You didn't do it. <laughs> Before he has a chance to say anything else, I run out of the apartment. It's my first day working at the Rena's coffee house. I'm completely nervous. Well, sort of. It's kind of hard to be nervous when my new boss, Gallon, as he insists being called, is so completely relaxed and down to earth. And weird, not, not only do I get a strange feeling about him, but he just acts strangely. I stand next to him, sweeping up some coffee grinds, trying not to stare at his, as he stacks the coffee mugs in a, in a seemingly impossible way. He sings as he stacks the cups so precariously that I'm certain they'll fall. Ooh, we, we see this guy again. Hey, cutie. All the while, a customer whispers to him. Gallo occasionally stops singing to talk to the man. You know my rules regarding that little matter. I don't know what the man said, but it's the first time I've seen Gallon look anything less than amused. I end up staring at them out of the corner of my eye while they talk. There's something about the man that seems dangerous, or maybe impish, and his steel gray eyes seem to hide many secrets behind them. Finally, the man glances my way and grins at me. Did I just see fangs? Michiko, would you be a strawberry and make black coffee for that customer near the window? Tetsuya can show you how. Gallon turns his back to his customer, and I get the feeling he wants me to go away. <laughs> Sighing, I leave the area from behind the counter and look for Tetsuya. Tetsuya is clearing the tables, balancing stacked dishes in one arm while wiping down the table with the other. Oh, a man that knows how to multitask. He looks like such a pro doing it that I sigh again, feeling particularly useless for having to bother him. You know what they say about sighing. He continues wiping down the table while we talk. What, what do they say, Tetsuya? Hmm? What, that your happiness will leave you? Yeah, it's pretty stupid. I've never heard that term. I guess my happiness has been constantly leaving me. But I've heard it so many times <laughs> that it's ingrained into me. Anyway, what did you need? Help me with the coffee machine? Really? You can't even make coffee yet? No, otherwise, why would I be asking you? Fine, just go over there and I'll be there in a sec. I do as I'm told and walk to the machine. A few minutes later, Tetsuya comes over to help. As he teaches me, I look back to where Gallon is. I notice that his customer is gone. He seems to be staring at nothing in deep thought. Hey, are you even paying attention? Watch out! 
Sorry. I look back down to what I'm doing and see that I've almost overfilled the coffee cup. Tatsu reaches over me to turn it off. His hand brushes against one of my softer areas when he does so. S sorry, that, that was an accident. My softer part of my hand? What is that? But would you please pay attention? This machine can be extremely dangerous if you don't use it right. It's just a coffee machine. Bro, have you never gotten burnt by coffee before? I mean, I haven't, but I've seen it before. <laughs> One that makes very hot drinks that I don't want to get burned by. Tetsuya glances at the bandages on my hand. But it looks as though you've already had your fair share of getting burned. Wow. <laughs> I have, but it wasn't by a coffee machine. Everything alright over there? Yes, sir. <laughs> I told you to knock it off with the sir stuff. Anyway, I'll be in my office. Try not to need me, but I'll be there for I'll be there if you do. Gallon saunters from behind the bar into the back room. At almost the exact instant the back room door slams shut, the front door opens. Ah, uh, Hello? Welcome? <laughs> I'm shocked to see who it is. Professor Kazama. Oh yeah, the professor visits this place in the evenings. I hate uh, a lot here. Actually, there should be a woman coming in soon after him if the rumors are true. Tatsuya moves away to go serve the customer their coffee, leaving my questions behind. Hey there, Melanie. Yeah, the woman is me. Well, technically, my character is a... Uh, well, she's a woman. They're old. They're in college. I didn't know you'd started working here. Today's my first day, actually. Oh, well, good luck. You look nice in your uniform. Oh, do you like it? <laughs> Thank you. The front door opens and another customer comes in. This time, it's a tall, gorgeous woman with dark red hair. Who is it? So She's so trendy and well-made. Up that, I wonder if she's a supermodel and as she takes a seat next to Hikaru. Oh, no. Out of my league. <laughs> oh, could this be the woman that Tetsuya was talking about? Probably. I wonder if it's the professor's girlfriend. They look really good together. Oh, my heart. She gives me an expectant look, but I'm too dumbfounded by her beauty to really understand. Her dangling earrings move with her as she cocks her head to the side. Can I order, please? A coffee would be delightful. Woman, hold up! I'm trying to admire your beautifulness. Huh. Rude. Hey, Lynn, how are you? I'm doing quite well this evening, and you? <laughs> freaking, freaking woman. I moved to get the coffee, feeling entirely frumpy and childish in front of two such beautiful adult people. Can we even woo Professor Kozama? Because I'm going to be upset if it's just him telling us a story when I want to fall in love with him. Show and I could never be like that. We just laugh too much. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, why am I thinking about show? Which is why I was laughing because she's thinking of show. I almost spilled the coffee on my bandaged hand again, but stopped just in time. Enough of this, I just need to concentrate on work. The whole point of this is to distract me from thinking too much. So I just need to do my best. It's after 10 and my shift is officially over. I'm exhausted. I never knew how hard it would be, or how hard it could be to work like this. How do people do it all the time? I'm barely standing, but Tetsu is still going strong, finishing up a few customers' orders. I noticed that the customer Gallon asked me to serve a few hours ago is still here in the corner on her laptop. I'm clocking out, Tetsuya. I grab my bag and sign out on my register. About the same time, I notice the customer close her laptop and get ready to leave. Wait, this girl has just been waiting on me? Excuse me? Have a nice night. She doesn't look at me at all, and I somewhat regret, what, regret saying it. I hate when customers do that. Well, whatever, can't help it if people are rude. Then, that's when I notice it, peeking out from behind her shoulder. Link, her shoulder linked black hair, I see a pair of bright blue earrings. I see them just before she leaves the building. That's... All I can think of is the past weeks of stress, fear, and of course, the charm Kayo gave me. I need to talk to her at least, find out what she wants. I hesitate for a moment, looking back at Tetsuya before turning around. No, if this isn't, if this is about our company, there's no reason to get the guys involved. I hitch my bag on my shoulder and walk out into the night. The girl is moving fast, so I'm already suspicious, but I figure there's one sure way to tell if she's malicious or not. Excuse me, miss! The moment I call out to her, the girl pushes someone aside and breaks out into a run. Know it! Freaking stalker. 
I knew it. That is the girl that's been stalking me this whole time. But I'm not going to live in fear anymore. I'll figure out what's going on and end this. I sling my bag crossways over my body and start running as fast as I can. Chapter 7. Darkness Comes. And guess what? This is where I'm saving the episode for today. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. We're gonna crack down on this girl here. We're gonna figure out why she's stalking us. Why are you doing this to us? I don't appreciate it, to be honest. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm.